Hello everyone, this is Carrie Beck with How to Homeschool My Child, take two. I didn't have everything here, I still probably don't have everything here. Anyway, tonight I want to talk to you about Advent Reads, Advent Calendars, and I'm going to show you a few ideas of things that we did, and just how to encourage your kids to participate in Advent, in preparing their hearts for Christmas. Even little bitty two, three, and four year olds, we can do this. So, last night I showed you our Advent Wreath. Here it is. Um, the one candle is supposed to be pink. It ended up being white, but I thought it was pink in the store. Uh, anyway, this, um, you've got four weeks in Advent, and every week we have a different theme. This week's is hope. And so you'll notice here on the feed in our group, I'm putting up a verse every week, every week, every day about hope. So far we've got three because I didn't decide to do this until Tuesday. So each night, if I were doing this with my kids, and yes, it's hard to hold and they all fall out. Anyway, we would just light one candle, the same candle, because it's the first candle. And so every time we read that verse, we, uh, our new verse, we would do a candle. The next week, we would do candle one and two. And then we would talk about the next week's theme. The other three themes are peace and joy and love. There go my candles. They're not doing very well. I did want to tell you that I looked at the grocery store. I looked at Target. I looked at Hobby Lobby. I could not find these candles at any of those places. Guess where I ended up finding them on the way home? Dollar Tree. You got two for a dollar. And that was a lot better than anywhere else I could have found them. But Target and the grocery store and Hobby Lobby, none of them had them. So if you're having a hard time finding them, maybe try a dollar store. Okay, so there's one thing. Let's talk for a minute. That was Advent Wreaths. I'm going to show you next week a, a wreath um, craft that you can do. But this week, the other thing I want to do, and I haven't made these. I just saw it, so I just grabbed these toilet paper rolls. If you don't want to do that, you could actually have your kids cover a toilet paper roll in red, 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 and pink. And they can make their own Advent wreath. And then if you want to, you could actually take a pipe cleaner and stick it up here once you have it covered in construction paper, and that is your little wick. And then that would be a representation. Another one I don't have, but I thought was fun, was to take a donut and birthday candles. And you put four candles in, and then you light however many uh, candles there are for that week, whatever week you happen to be. And everyone's donut, and you could sprinkle the donut with some green sugar, and that would be actually what you might do. So that's a little donut advent wreath. Now, let's move on to advent calendars. Where should I start? Okay, I'm going to start with this one. This is an advent calendar that Hunter, my son, picked up at a garage sale several years ago. Now, I need to take all of the numbers off and put them in the um, the little doors down here, and I'm going to, but I wanted to show you what it looks like. There are several things you could do with this. You could actually talk about what the different symbols of Christmas are when you pull them out. These should all be hiding in their little door, but besides the little wooden piece, you could also print out the scripture and then roll it up and then you pull it out. You pull the little wooden piece out and you pull the scripture out and then you read that verse. And that could be just a general Advent reading schedule or if you want to do the first week of hope verses and then I think it's peace and love and joy at the end. So that would be another way that you could actually tie Christ and preparing our hearts for Christmas into something fun like this advent calendar. We actually had an advent calendar that my mom made that was fabric and for some reason this year I can't find it but it was huge and it had numbers at the bottom and a little bear you moved around but on those numbers you could also put verses there. So if you have any ideas as I'm going please feel free to pop a comment in here or just tell me that you're here. So that would be another thing. This is something you would probably have to find on a used site because I don't think it's in stock anymore, but I love it. I don't know why they quit carrying this. This is an advent calendar, and actually this is sort of messed up. I was demonstrating it the other day. Um, they should have numbers here, So, um, and it's only 12 days, but you basically would pull this out, and you would have a little card inside. All the cards are down here, and I'll just show you since I'm demonstrating this. Um, all the cards are in here, you can see. So we have Thanksgiving, Christmas, and Easter, and you can use this for three different holidays. 
So let, this isn't the right one, but let's just say you pull out the card. Well, here we go. This is definitely not the right one. This is baby Jesus for Christmas, but you would open it up. You would turn it over. Your kids, even preschoolers can look at the picture. You can turn it over and read Jesus. That's number 12. Jesus is the greatest gift of all. Then what you're going to do is you'll see this is the Thanksgiving picture. This is the Christmas picture and this is the Easter picture. So we would turn it over because we're going to make the Christmas puzzle like this. The other thing it comes with is a great little book here. And the book is sort of cool because it's very simple. Again, simple, simple. Let me get the um, Christmas one. Where is the Christmas one? Can't even pull it. Well, here, we'll just do Jesus again. So here we have Jesus. When you pull it out, it says the same thing. Then it has a verse and then it has a question. And that is how simple it is. Even if you didn't have this and you just found this book, it would be really great because it is so simple for little kids to do. Something you could just do at the dinner table as well. So I bought this at Dayspring, but I think you're going to have to find it on eBay or Amazon use. The other thing I would really encourage you to do, especially with kids, is have nativity scenes that your kids can actually hold throughout the whole Advent season. So let me just show a few. Again, my mother, she made us these fabric ones. Actually, I have a friend that has them. And th there's more than this. There's wise men and uh, camels and sheep and shepherds. But they're fabric. And if the kids drop them, okay, it doesn't matter. We're not being disrespectful, but they're not going to break anything. I have breakable nativities over there. And so they were not allowed to touch these, but they could use these. They could play with these. They could create the Christmas story or whatever with these particular stuff. Um, stuff pieces and it, you could tell the Christmas story. You could actually put them around the house, let them uh, find them and then tell the story of whoever the person is that they have. I will tell you this, we sort of tease, here's this. Um, baby Jesus, I thought we lost baby Jesus last year, but when you turn him over, we teased he looked like a potato, but he isn't, but anyway, this is the baby Jesus. The other thing, gosh, I guess my mom gave us a lot, are these little, she found something at like a little dollar store with all the pieces, again, here is um, baby Jesus. They're plastic, and my kids dropped them. It didn't matter. I mean, their favorite thing was to actually take the pieces and put them on their fingers, sort of like bugles, and then they could tell the story like that as well. They had fun, but they learned about the story of Jesus first. Excuse me. Now, my kids, I have not made them a stuffed nativity scene. Instead, both my daughters have the Little People Fisher, or I think it's Fisher Price nativity set. This is awesome. My granddaughters will play for hours, acting it out and playing with them. The pieces just fit in their hand. The star actually lights up. The reason I have one more is because Hunter isn't married and this one's still sitting at the house waiting for his family. But both of my girls have it. All three of my granddaughters love playing with this. It's a great imaginative play, a retelling, listen to the story and then go retell it, narrate it. Even the two, three, and four-year-old can play with this. My six-year-old granddaughter can actually tell the story as well. So if you've never looked at this, I'll put a link to this. I had it at some point somewhere this week, but this would be another good thing. Then the last thing I just want to share with you is I would encourage you to find a good Advent book. Our favorite book was Jotham's Journey. And the thing I liked about this is it was obviously a storybook for Advent. It actually tells you exactly, okay, this is week one on Saturday. And you read this story, this chapter, and yes. Then when you're done, you have a little explanation of what's going on. The story of Jotham is set in Bethlehem, or not Bethlehem, in Israel. They end up in Bethlehem. He is a young boy that gets separated from his family during the time that Jesus was going to be born, when everyone was going for the census. I do not recommend this for preschoolers. I recommend it for elementary and up. It's not that there's any blood and gore. But there's a few little tense moments that I think would scare preschoolers. And so this is more for older kids. We read this. There's actually two more books. I don't really recommend them. They're a little too politically correct and not as theologically sound. And so this is the one I, I recommend. We read all three of them, but we came back and then read this one year 
after year after year. The cool thing is it's at every chapter, every little section ends at a cliffhanger and the kids are like, no, don't stop dad, don't stop. But that was what was fun about this as well. So this is one book I highly recommend if you haven't ever read it, go find that and then you can actually use it as an Advent book. And it can keep your, you can talk about what was life like. Your kids will become enthralled in the whole culture of what was going on in Israel at that time. And you will feel like you're actually living at that time as well. That is all I have. These are quick, short little videos. I will put some links to these different resources so that you can use them. I said I was gonna talk about St. Nicholas and I decided Advent was more important. Let's get focused on a, a system. Either get the calendar out and do your Bible verses or do your wreath and do your hope and peace verses and light your candle. Find a book or let your kids play with nativity. Make a choice, find one thing, don't do it all. Find one thing you will do this year and it could become a tradition. This became a tradition for us. The kids playing when they were little, this was a tradition. And even the calendar that we had, we had a different one when they were growing up, but this was the same idea. And we did do an Advent reading schedule. If you want that, that is in our uh, Christmas celebrations ebook. I don't have that with me right now. If you have any questions, pop them in here. If you have any ideas, pop a comment in here as well. I will be back tomorrow. I will talk about St. Nicholas. I will have a fun little activity. It's actually edible that you can do with St. Nicholas and with German, Germany at Christmas time. I'm Carrie Beck with How to Homeschool My Child. Y'all have a great day. Great evening.